Hi YouTube, in this video we're going to prove that the sequence sine of 1 over n is a Cauchy sequence, is a Cauchy sequence. So before we do the proof, let me recall what it means for a sequence to be Cauchy. We say a sequence a sub n is Cauchy if, for all epsilon greater than zero, we can find some positive integer, say capital N, such that, for all little n and little m bigger than capital N, we can make the distance between a sub n and a sub m arbitrarily small. Well, how small? Smaller than epsilon. So in this problem, we're going to prove that this sequence is Cauchy, and the sequence in question is the sine of 1 over n. So this here is our a sub n. So proof. So before we do the proof, we have to actually figure it out. So I'm going to come over here, and we'll do the scratch work. So we'll have an epsilon greater than 0. And we'll need to find a capital N such that this distance is less than epsilon. So the distance we're looking at is a sub n, that's going to be sine of 1 over n, minus and then sine of 1 over m. And you could use a trig identity, but I think in this case, um, if we think of this as plus negative, we can just jump straight to the triangle inequality. Recall the triangle inequality says that the absolute value of a plus b is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. This will be less than or equal to the absolute value of sine of 1 over n plus the absolute value of negative sine of 1 over m. So this is equal to the absolute value of sine of 1 over n, just rewriting it and eliminating the negative there, plus the absolute value of the sine of 1 over m. Good stuff. All right, so now what do we do? Well, there is another identity uh, from mathematics that is very, very useful in problems like this. Um, if you have the absolute value of the sine of x, that's less than or equal to the absolute value of x. Super, super useful, right? So here, this is less than or equal to the absolute value of 1 over n, plus, and the second term is less than or equal to the absolute value of 1 over m. So this is equal to 1 over n plus 1 over m. And the goal is that we want this to be less than epsilon. So one thought is to maybe make this equal to, equal to epsilon over 2 and this equal to epsilon over 2, uh, and then you can add them and the result uh, is equal to epsilon. But if we can make this less than epsilon over 2, and this less than epsilon over 2, then the sum will be less than epsilon. So let's do that. Let's make this less than epsilon over 2, and this less than epsilon over 2. See, we don't have a less than yet, but when we, when we force this to be less than epsilon over 2, that will create a less than for us in the proof. So I'll do it over here. So we want 1 over n to be less than epsilon over 2. So if we multiply by 2 and multiply by n, we get 2 less than n epsilon, I just cross multiply, not divide by epsilon, so we get 2 over epsilon less than n. If you read that backwards, it says n bigger than 2 over epsilon. Did that kind of fast. So multiply, you get 2, multiply, you get n epsilon. We divide it by epsilon, then I just wrote it backwards, n greater than 2 over epsilon, there it is. Via the Archimedean property, we can choose a natural number bigger than 2 over epsilon. Given any real number, and 2 over epsilon is certainly a real number, because epsilon is greater than 0, it's not 0, we can find a number that is bigger. It's called the Archimedean property. So we can invoke the Archimedean property in our proof to choose our natural number. Let's do the proof. So we'll start by saying epsilon is greater than 0. Let me scroll up so you can see the definition of Cauchy again. So you start with this, and now you have to find a positive integer n. Well, we did all of that hard work to find it, and also to see how to do the proof. So we'll choose a natural number 
via the Archimedean property, so I'm not writing it down, but I'm saying it in words, greater than, and we said 2 over epsilon. So if you were like doing this for like a classroom or something, like homework, you probably want to say that, you know, you, by the Archimedean property, I am choosing a natural number, you know, etc. So choose our n. Then for all little n, little m bigger than capital N, we're going to look at the absolute value of the difference, right? Sine of 1 over n minus the sine of 1 over m. Nice problem. And we can use the triangle inequality. Again, think of this as plus negative. So, so we, can, we have a plus sign. We're using this inequality here. So this is less than or equal to the absolute value of sine of 1 over n plus the absolute value of the negative sign of 1 over n. I'm going to go ahead and drop the negative because the absolute value eliminates it. And we saw that that, that happened earlier, right? I wrote this extra step here to, to get rid of the negative. This is less than or equal to 1 over n plus 1 over m, right? That's using, using this useful fact. So now let's go back and formalize uh, our little work with, with n. So let's do that carefully. So since, let's be really formal here. So since little n is bigger than capital N, which is bigger than 2 over epsilon, we have little n bigger than 2 over epsilon. And so what do we want to solve for here? Well, we want to solve for 1 over n. So I'm going to divide by n and then divide by 2 over epsilon. So basically, this is going to become epsilon over 2 is greater than 1 over n. So 1 over n is less than epsilon over 2. Likewise, little m is bigger than n, which is bigger than 2 over epsilon. So 1 over m is less than epsilon over 2. Hence, let's go back and formalize it, we have the difference between the sign, just to really make it clear, because we, we derailed here for a minute to justify the choice of our n in the proof. So it's good form to go back and just let the reader know what you're doing. So we're going back and looking at that difference again. So right, this is where we are, this is what we're doing. Is less than or equal to, we can skip to this step, we don't have to go through the whole thing, but at least this adds some clarity to the proof for the reader. And then now we know that 1 over n is less than epsilon over 2. And this whole little thing we did here really justifies that. So less than epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2, and that's equal to epsilon, right? And that completes the proof. So we have shown uh, that this is a Cauchy sequence. I hope this video uh, helps uh, someone out there who is working on maybe, maybe Cauchy sequences. That's it.